So Dainora will now present how students and staff uh, in Lithuania have been involved in the provision of simultaneous interpreting, um, AD and certifying into English, among other things, at the National Kaunas Drama Theater. Um, and then we will also be joined by another colleague, Lina, uh, from Actida. It's a, a company, um, and they will touch upon the issue of non-accessibility and reasons uh, for this side of the accessibility story. Um, again, uh, their their perspective uh, coming from, from Lithuania. Uh, so thank you, Dainora. I'm going to make you a co-host so that you can um, you can share your screen if you if you want to. Just give me one little minute to just find you. Yes. Here. So good, after uh, good afternoon, good evening. I should say everyone, it's nice to see and everyone from different parts of Europe and well so quickly from Belgium we are coming to Konas and Konas University of Technology and um, I shall describe quickly myself, I'm blonde, female, um, we're well having long hair but today it's just twisted and a bun so you can see me I'm wearing a um, pink kind of dress and um, I am a representative of Konas University of Technology um, a teacher of localization translation where we have a program programs on technical translation and localization and um, behind me in the background, you can see, uh, well, the fresco of the building where our faculty and many of translators are based. So actually, I'm not alone to some extent because I am supported by two Renaissance women from the paintings of Leonardo da Vinci, but they're wearing headphones to indicate that our mission is to connect what is in a way classical, such as languages, translation, music, with technologies and provide accessibility where we can. And I'm at, 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 well, a little bit sad because I had just got message from, from the representatives of the company because of their headquarters in Vilnius and Kolnas, which is around 100 kilometers, that the head got stuck in a traffic jam due to some conditions. And if he is able to join while taking a ride and driving, a, well, riding a car himself from Konas to Vilnius, he will be joining us. So let's hope that he will be able to do that. If not, so we will be waiting um, for all of, of the participants in next events, where Linus will gladly is going to present what's happening in the reverse side when accessibility is not provided because of clients, because of technical issues and because of other things. So now I'm going to share my screen very quickly and introduce, just a moment, uh, and introduce the case. I hope you can see them. How we started it all and how National Konos Drama Theatre got accessible and how everything started. And uh, so, well, what I will try to do quickly, just uh, talk about the project and why did we think of such a thing? And I will touch upon challenges, what interpreters, young learners and translators might face when dealing. And of course, the lessons learned in, in a way skill, skills gained because we tried practicing project-oriented approach in our classes with the students. And of course, then finally, we'll have some conclusions. So first of all, why did we start thinking of such a thing? Of course, well, um, uh, theater in Konas and Konas is academic city and theater is very much important. And there are lots of things happening overall in theater. Lots of events when students are actively involved because, well, we have um, many universities and also there are lots of guests coming in. And simply at some point in time, the theater realized that content and production, what is introduced, was not accessible. And uh, simply together well, with the heads of uh, and the, the art directors and the director of the theater, we started thinking that it's the high time to make the theater internationalized, but also accessible. 
And uh, simply, it was mm, just a decision taken together because not only that CONAS is an academic city and half of the population are students and teachers and there are international students, but also there were other events um, planned and CONAS uh, was announced as the European culture capital 2022. And so initial steps for getting ready were already taken starting from 2014 and 2015. And uh, of course, well, in addition to that, um, based on European regulations and also thinking about people who have, might have and have special needs. So um, we started thinking that it's already time to start doing at least something, not, uh, not at least step by step, increasing the accessibility of uh, the theater. And um, in addition to that, um, well, we started talking that uh, since we are trying to apply project based approach in our lessons and classes, when students really get to solve um, real situations, provide real solutions for businesses, enterprises, companies, we understood that theater is also an interesting lab. Uh, not only to experiment, but also to take part because the theater is pretty well equipped with all the technologies. And so this is how all started some introduction. And uh, well, this is, well, the theater, I hope you can see the National Drama Theater. It's one of the oldest uh, theaters in Lithuania and one of the leading theaters, which is, um, uh, um, staging performances, uh, well, not only in Lithuania, in different places, and even public places like open markets, and it moves quite a lot. And um, simply, they're very technical in terms of possibilities, not only having interpreters booths and uh, all facilities needed, but having also um, equipment that can be moved to some places if uh, audio description is needed. But up to the moment in time, they were not exploiting their possibilities. So, so simply, well, um, the theater itself started understanding that they have possibilities technical possibilities of realizing that. And uh, so how did it all start? As I mentioned, it started in 2015 and uh, as a joint effort of National Kona's Drama Theater and our university. And the first imperative, of course, was related, well, with strategic things of the um, National Drama Theater, simply to get more internationalized and to get more open because of opening the doors to people who are non-Lithuanians, to people who have special needs and step-by-step step getting ready for the events of Kolnas as the European culture capital, which, well, we had, when we had many events in 2022. And uh, of course, um, we as a university also decided that it's a good opportunity because uh, this way our students will really see how things are happening, not ideal or simulated cases, but how it goes on in practice when sometimes you do not get enough of information, when you have to interpret or get ready and, and interpret just the very moment you're here or when some art directors invite you simply because of the rehearsal and there are foreigners and they have to uh, communicate in between and to get into specific artistic design which is devised by the director and um, because of that we said yes we would like doing interpreting and I myself uh, I'm interpreter and was interested of trying it out how it really works in such strange and interesting situations when you have lots of multimodality added up for instance you have not only actors speaking you have uh, technical things exploited such as videos music songs at the very same time and what do you do so this was a creative open and still 
still is a creative open lab to all of us because we are learning together with students and trying to work as a team, being all there and uh, being all responsible, but also learning to understand that the overall success um, of the performance, the overall success of uh, spectators being happy and understanding is a mutual effort of every and each person involved at the theater and from our part, all of the students. And also, this allows us um, to bring some awareness um, to the other side, well, who, who doesn't understand what translation and interpreting is, simply introducing what kind of profession is that, because sometimes actors, directors, they don't think, well, even do not realize how processes go on. So all in all, the project started and well, of course, well, we don't call it project anymore because it's practice for us. And we are in pretty much happy about that. And we have been cooperating successfully. And at the end, you shall see how it developed later on. And so, well, um, just uh, with the students, uh, um, I forgot to say that, um, well, um, um, when the first performance took place, we, we discussed how it's going to happen. So, so we started talking about strategies, how it should get ready. So it's not enough simply to read the script and the materials, the play of Shakespeare or the play of uh, Lithuanian, uh, um, Lithuanian writers. Uh, you have to take part in rehearsals, which is interesting because from that perspective, you can get acquainted with the theater and see the size of the theater you have never thought of even being um, a translator and interpreter sometimes, not to mention the sp you, yourself as a, a spectator. In addition to that, well, we agreed with the theater that um, if, uh, let's say, directors do not agree that students uh, as interpreters come into rehearsals, we could watch video materials because sometimes based on the agenda on schedules of rehearsals, you cannot simply even see the first show of, of the play. And um, in addition to that, we agree that there will be possibility, not disturbing directors and actors, but uh, there will be a possibility if, if there are some difficulties in understanding context uh, or some, some places of the performance to talk to directors and actors. And the theater happily agreed in that. In addition to that, um, uh, the theater agreed providing the translators with the um, copyrighted scripts and seeing, well, some parts, for instance, if some, some place were staged um, uh, in Lithuanian, but then translated into English, the, the theater had some of the translations already, so they agreed providing the materials. And of course, well, we agreed with the students that, of course, well, they're responsible for, for doing all that and getting involved and uh, watching even the play several times. And the theater also agreed allowing students to come and sit in the performances simply to understand what is happening before getting ready um, for the translation and interpreting. And um, in addition to that, uh, while getting ready, thinking of the strategies when you get a script, well, students were trained that you always have to have the spectator in mind and understand that the audience might not necessarily be all English speakers, that they may not necessarily be uh, all well um, well acquainted with some pieces of, of or plays and uh, or even some vocabulary. So spectator in mind for the students what probably was one of the most difficult things not to forget because when you start interpreting, you start thinking, how well should I do it in order the spectators would be happy and um, uh, the artistic design of the performance uh, would not be destroyed by what you do. So, um, and uh, when we started talking, um, well, we started also discussing that um, we have to understand and we really have to deal with the different channels of communication that are being used. Um, and um, 
in addition to hearing and watching what is happening on stage if you can because not always you sit um, uh, where the performance takes place because sometimes you might be behind the setting behind uh, behind uh, um, the scene itself somewhere in another place and watching it everything all via tv so you should understand that there might be other narratives used which might be tricky when you have to render in addition to that, um, though uh, sometimes we have, usually we have scripts, we do understand that actors are also human beings and they may improvise, they may forget, they may start talking together at a time. And the first performance that we did interpreting, by the way, was Max Frisch biography the spiel and we did it and um, it was really an interesting experience because at the same time the director of the art director he decided to exchange one actor with another and it was interesting for him to watch how that actor is going to fit into the performance and in addition to that um it was um a very large event organized in Kona Symposium for translators and musicians of 500 people. So they were watching the play. And um, what, is, what was interesting is that um, the first interpreting was successful. And uh, uh, during the rehearsals, everything went smooth. But when the actual play was on stage, actors started improvising I don't know maybe because they forgot and uh, they forgot the text though the director was very scrupulous and he asked uh, the actors not to forget a single line so it was really interesting that while getting ready uh, for the performance we knew what is going to happen because we watched uh, the play itself we took part in the performances and suddenly you see and well you have the script in front of you and you see that like 10 lines are omitted and well something else is happening so this is well multitasking is one of the skills where you usually have to think off and not to forget and just to quickly to quickly make um, some decisions what to do and think again about your spectators how they would understand who 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 are watching the play at a time in addition to that well the challenges that we have to face are related to different decisions so uh, of our directors for instance you might hear music uh very loud but the actor is also uh saying his or her soliloquy at a time or sometimes well there are some other um, technical impediments that you have to deal for instance one of the plays Barbara Rajivili which is well the Lucinian Romeo and Juliet story about royal families and their love story but also about Lucinia so it was the last performance which was both interpreted and uh, at the same time, it, it was video recorded by the Lithuania National Broadcaster for further demonstration of, of uh, the play when the play is no longer available in the theater. So because of that, there were many technical arrangements. And because of that, uh, uh, we couldn't hear the sound uh, very well that was broadcasted to us. So we had also to think of a solution so as not to leave spectators not understanding what's, what is going on. In addition to that, we always well train students that you should always remember that actors may also forget that they are being interpreted, despite the fact that they're being informed what is going to happen. But sometimes, well, because of, again, artistic design and what is being devised by our director, they start speaking very quickly. Or we had cases when, because of very tense situations, the actor spoke so in such a um, low voice and so silently that even the very um, and the very front people seated couldn't hear what's happening. So this is interesting. This is challenging, but this trains you as a future interpreter uh, how to deal with such situations. 
And in addition to that, it was a funny situation that be before we got into and the project with the theater. The theater told us that, you know, we start, well, 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 we sort of initially of interpreting ourselves when we have the script translated and an actor comes in and starts reading what's happening. And they understood themselves. It doesn't help. It cannot be done like that because they are non-professionals. But also, well, well, the students understood that despite the fact when you have a text in front of you, Yes, it's a help of understanding what's happening, especially in those situations if there are omissions by the actor and the actor either forgets or replaces one part with another part, but still strictly well, well, we uh, students understood that simply following the text when they are in a stressful situation and they simply are stressed because of the atmosphere of interpreting that you cannot read because what is being written and what is being said is not the same. And of course, one of the cha challenges when students understood that they have to deal a lot, how to render culture specific information, um, which is, um, how to say, might be new to the audience, though so well known to you as an interpreter. And probably one of the difficult, most difficult things is the retain, uh, the focus of attention, because sometimes because of uh, working, um, uh, well, multitasking, uh, listening, um, watching what's happening on stage, you might forget that you are interpreting. So this is really well a set of um, advice that our students um, were given and we tried to cope with and work together while getting ready. And so this is again, well, well, one of the examples, what I talked about, this was so, um, one of the first place, and this actually was the first place which was interpreted. And um, the situation talking about narratives is such that though being, uh, well, within the place where performance takes place, you can see actors are facing their backs this is one thing, so that's why the volume is not that um, clearly, the, the voice of the actors is not so clear sometimes when they speak. In addition to that, you have a narrative, which is a movie shown on the screen at a time in between, and there is some text and both the actors and uh, the movie as if interact and uh, well, in, at one point in time, five people are speaking and you as a translator, you have to make a decision what to do, how to select the piece of information which is the most important and how to render it for, for the audience and for the spectators. So uh, of course, well, while getting ready, to deal with such challenges like this, we talked with the students that, well, despite the fact that we tried out um, several set of strategies and they work in one performance, we need to reconsider and to rethink those strategies in every performance because um, multimodality is one of the things you have to take into consideration. And sometimes this is one of the greatest challenges because you may be taking part in rehearsals. You may get acquainted with the script, but suddenly when there is a performance, it goes differently because sometimes rehearsals are related just to some parts and you don't see sometimes uh, the final result or sometimes it goes like this, that one performance is like this. And if let's say on Friday, we have a performance, on Sunday, especially when we have the first shows, Saturday, sorry, the director decides to cut some parts and they forget to inform you. So sometimes um, you get something on the screen and you were not informed uh, before. So this is how you have, well, when you have to take multimodality into consideration all the time and have to make a quick decision. Interestingly enough, students, well, we try talking and, and getting ready to understand that when we are rendering Lucinian plays into English, 
an English place into Lithuanian. By English, I do not mean that only uh, the ones that are written, but simply we are indicating the direction, non lithuanian place, let's say, into Lithuanian. Uh, so so it, it's really different because again, if it's, let's say, related to Lithuanian history, and you shall see some examples, you think um, you have to uh, really think a lot and work a lot with the team how to provide the best solution for the words to be rendered in the precise way. And for instance, this is what I'm talking about. We had a play which is called Forest Brother, and it's related to partisan movement. And we had forest brothers, forest sisters who were fighting against, um, against the oppression and getting into the war. And the play is about a person who was, in a way, a forest brother, but it's kind of a comic play. And the Lithuanian text uh, speaks well, well, and uses metaphorical play of words that, uh, um, while saying Cox to Mishkinus to Naminis, which directly would sound your yeah, forest brother. But if you use forest brother as the title forest brother, nobody would understand the play of words. And instead of saying forest brother, you start thinking how to render it, that you are forestic. You are not forestic, you are not domestic. So, so this is really difficult because you have to think that not all audience would understand what forest brothers and sisters are. Uh, so this is one example, and it really took us a lot of time trying to find out the best way with the art director what to provide. Another interesting example, which comes from the biography of play acting of Max Frisch, um, when uh, the original text, which was translated uh, into English, The Smell of the Elder was in the air, they were simply talking about atmosphere, trees, different types of trees, but elders are not so, so, so frequently seen in Lithuania. So, so instead, within the original script, what, what, what was interesting, the elder was replaced into lilacs, because lilacs are there and we understand what lilacs are. And there are other examples, for instance, while getting ready to Max Frisch and interpreting into English, yeah, it, it, there is a place when different types of fish are being mentioned. And we see pikes, flat fish, tapir fish, nice punch. And instead of um, saying all those types of fish, um, like, like uh, flat fish and taper fish, not everybody um, is so well familiar with different types of fish. So instead of that naming all a uh, tapir fish and a and, uh, nice tench, they were simply omitted. And uh, well, the text sounded like other, other type of fish and that's it. So this is another example, how you have to think of when getting ready. Well, uh, that not everybody is so well familiar and sometimes omissions or, um, or replacement uh, um, generalizations or simplifications would work quite well and you shouldn't be afraid of that. Uh, now, when further on talking and discussing with the students, we understood that we, we are facing not only the challenges of overall interpreting, but challenges while interpreting, right? And probably the most difficult part is to stay there all the time. Because, well, in conference interpreting, you can, well, be replaced. And this is what you actually do. But in interpreting of a performance, you cannot do that because, um, well, in this theater, our directors, they um, ask, well, you that, and you understand that the audience um, gets familiarized with your voice, with the tone, and, and well, simply, um, it's, it's easier for them to follow. So sometimes, if acts are really long. So it's really quite a challenge to talk for a long period of time. Not to mention that sometimes after the first shows, uh, uh, you're being invited to interpret further on in different meetings because there are sometimes receptions going on. So which is way greater of a challenge. Another thing is that, uh, well, um, talking about the speed of speech, uh, which is quite difficult to manage. Well, so sometimes um, uh, actors have to speak very quickly and you understand that as well. Well, you need to render that information to some extent. And probably, well, mm, 
technical impediments are also always there and you have to be aware of that. If something happens, for instance, the sound is cut off, still you have to talk because your audience cannot be left in silence. So then it's good when, when the scripts um, come into play and you can use them and simply think what to do. And uh, well, it's interesting uh, to mention that you never know what will happen on stage until you see that performance that day. Because again, well, there are lots of interesting things happening when sometimes even because of technologies, sometimes something cannot be rendered or provided and, and they may get broken during, during the performance and, and so on and so forth. So as an interpreter, you sometimes ob observe those things which are really interesting and you can compare place and this is how we're thinking of, of, of going on with the research of interpreting at the theater um and of course then you understand that each performance is diff different because of that because we're all human beings but you still always think that joint effort is important and everybody at the moment should assist and try and do the best to make um spectators happy and retention of attention, again, I talked a little bit about it, is one of the difficulties and challenges we try to cope with in terms of thinking how to work when you have to interpret one hour without a break or one hour and a half based on the decision of an art director. And so this is one of the examples what I was talking about, that you never know what is going to happen. This is one of the plays, um, documentary play, which was staged by by Canadian art director Chris Abraham from from Preta Portier Parole Theatre, and um, we would think of that right now having technologies we. we could always have either subtitling or subtitles offered, but still there are some things, well, some, some performances when it's impossible. And this is the case. First of all, it's interesting that the documentary goes like that, that um, at some point in the performance, all actors that you see, uh, right now you see them, they're seated around the table, um, they leave, the stage for around 20 minutes and during that moment people from the audience the exact number of people are being invited so you never know how many of them are going to come and you never know what they are going to say and you have to interpret that in addition to that, which, well, what is an interesting situation, you see the screens which are above the table. Right now, well, they're showing um, actors and actresses, but at some point in time, which happened to us, while well, we got ready, we took part in, part in rehearsals, but it was just the first show, the, night, the grand opening of the performance. Um, we just, during the interpreting, understood that at some point in time on each and every screen, the conversation via Viber or WhatsApp is being shown for the audience. And since we are interpreting um, behind the scene, we couldn't even read what's written on the screen because we have the information shown us and streamed via TV. So it's it's not that visible. And so it was really interesting. What should we do? How to get uh, out of, how to get out of that situation? Of course, the next night we asked the well um, people from the theater to send us information and to, to indicate what's on the screen is being shown. But but that is really a challenge. And um, this clearly uh, demonstrates that every performance is different and you never know how to get out of such situations. And so, so the lessons learned, um, what we understood while working together, that actually getting ready is really time consuming. And as though the theater is welcoming and you can watch performances take part in, in addition, um, watch different materials, read the script, it really takes a lot of time and time management becomes one of the key issues of getting ready. 
um, to take into consideration that students have to study, and it's not only the theater. Uh, it's, it's uh, well, in addition to that, they have classes, they have to be in the uni university, likewise we, the teachers who are also getting into the project together. Of course, multimodality, what sometimes you may not think of, multimodality of the theater in terms of narratives they may produce and how quickly they may change and they may produce. And, and then learning not to get lost and quickly react and make a decision is also one of the skills. What is difficult to be trained, but has to be trained. And the more you practice, uh, the better it gets, but simply not to get lost if you don't hear, if you don't see, if you do not understand what's happening, because you understand that you cannot live the stage, I mean, interpreting booth and say, no, 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 I'm not interpreting. And in addition to that, you learn a lot about the theater and you learn a lot about the apron and behind parts of the theater that you have never ever learned about it. And in addition, what you understand and what you learn is that though we would consider, and like the first speak of today's session, that uh, that it's well, the interpreting of the theater, it's kind of literal, more more literal texts, and you may have well-known plays and and uh, uh, well-known things that were translated before, uh, but still there are lots of technical things in terms of technical translation because, well, when you get to translate documentary parts, well, documentary performances that might be related purely to technology, so something you wouldn't expect that sometimes uh, there are so many technical um, terms and things and you wouldn't think of of that. And in addition to that, um, you have to understand that sometimes you have to deal with different domains from history to religion, from art uh, to, to war and so on and so forth. So this is well interesting because it expands your knowledge and broadens the mind, but you understand that again, getting ready for each play requires uh, lots of time and lots of reading to be done. And in addition to that, Sometimes within, when actors uh, start improvising, you are not also informed, so you should understand that sometimes not only a text has to be translated, but sometimes there are songs, of course, luckily enough, you do not have to sing, but sometimes there are songs, poems that are lively performed and, and just the very and that moment created, and this is what you have to get ready. So. These are lessons, what we learned about the theater, but also to some extent skills that we started thinking of and we started training our students for, which is interesting because this shows that um, uh, the theater provides us an interesting and creative lab, both for experimenting and also for, for doing research and also for training the future interpreters and translators. And how did it develop further on? The work of the interpreters for the attempts um, to, to, to provide interpreting at the theater, though it was nothing new and kind of late in Lysena, it still was the um, nominated for the award or award or organizations for simply trying this out. And um, later on, um, it provided uh, stimulus um, to start um, the provision of subtitles and subtitles, um, which is being done by students from another university. The, so the theater started cooperating with other universities. And also um, it brought to decisions to start doing audio descriptions uh, um, and also for, for providing information and then allowing access uh, of people who have uh, um, hard of hearing issues. In addition to that, we started doing translation. It all developed into translation of play scripts, uh, publications, advertisements, and students themselves got introduced into um, production of plays, for instance, the assembly, when the play, the assembly Cronus was staged for half a year, student was invited simply to interpret um, um, dialogues and conversations for the art director from Canada, who was observing what 10 people invited into the theater talk about, 
um, at a dinner table. And this was all recorded. And based on that, the play, the assembly was staged in Kaunas, not to mention that the play itself had to be interpreted. In addition to that, the linguistic solutions for the web page of the theater were provided and, and, and introduced. And finally, right now we are thinking of carrying out research with, which is related to eye tracking, trying to see how to help interpreters in such situations and was I tracking to us well um, to see how they are subdividing their attention and in terms of stimuli gained and how they are going well what kind of cognitive effort is read, needed when you you are subdividing uh, your attention in between of your computer what you have in front and what's going on on the stage so finally all in all what we found out and concluding then when trying to do, first of all, you have to love the theater a lot and be a lover and of course of the theater, but also love what you are doing as an interpreter because sometimes the time spent um, is way more than what you gain, I mean, financially, but still you do that because you love it and because you understand that the show must go on. So thank you very much. That was all. And I see, well, I got no message and I thought I could buy more time. So, so this is what I wanted to sh share with you on uh, how, how Kona's National Drama Theatre got, got um, accessible and right now is accessible and we are proud of that. And if you have any questions or comments, I would be welcome to answer. And uh, Lina's just brought me a message yet well he couldn't log in because well because of technical issues so sorry about it and thank you very much thank you really thank you and uh you well you you, you filled in the, your allocated time beautifully so we of course we are sorry that your colleague could not could not join but um you provided us with with quite a lot of information to to um, to make up for uh, for that um and congratulations also on on your project and the fact that you you seem to have planted the seed for even more um even more accessibility and translation and interpreting to to happen um we're just going to ask our um our audience members if they if they have any questions um if if not it's just a very short uh, question from me um how long I said that you planted the seed. How long did it take from when you first started uh, the interpreting projects until the theater started to see, okay, maybe we could have some subtitles, we could have some audio description? Thank you for the question. Just um, we started interpreting in 2015, and it was that we got ready within just like two months for that actually very quickly and I guess that kind of half a year, well half a year passed and um, already um, audio descriptions first were introduced just uh, I would have to go back <laughs> to the history but just less than a year it was very quick it was very quick and and uh, I forgot to say that for instance last year all in all, at the theater, there were 39 performances provided um, in English. One of them was interpreted in French. Two of them were interpreted in Ukrainian. Um, two of them were uh, interpreted, no, not uh, three or four, sorry, four of them were interpreted uh, in English. The rest of them, was done with the subtitles and uh, uh, and subtitled and uh, just a moment three of them were for 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 um, the audio descriptions so it's not a lot but still it's an attempt to do more and more of it 
Yeah, and also in a relatively short amount of time. So really, uh, thank you, thank you again. Uh, this was the the last presentation in our uh, in our day. Um, Claudia will now, uh, when we we're just going to wrap up, we'll take about uh, two or three minutes. Claudia will kindly share um, the, the the Slido uh, QR code, and also in the chat, we'll also place again the link to our to our very brief question. Um, please do, um, do let us know what you thought about the day or maybe just one or two or three sessions that you managed to uh, to, to catch. Um, for me, it's definitely been a, a very, very exciting day. Um, it was lovely to have so many colleagues from the academia from outside to share their stories. And we heard, you know, everything from fish, flowers, mice, phone boxes, songs, poems, plays, exhibitions and user groups. And all in all about how to how to use language, but not only language to make culture um, accessible to as wide um, as wide an audience as possible. Um, I I thank you all for really for your interactions throughout the day. I think that we uh, we had a fairly interactive uh, day, um, and I am I'm going to to tell you that this was it in terms of the third Translating Europe workshop and that it belonged to the From Translation to Accessibility series, EMT Train the Trainer Summer School, and this was Translation and Accessibility in the Cultural and Institutional Sector. My thanks again, um, and I hope to see you again, um, maybe face-to-face -face or maybe online. Thank you and have a lovely evening. <laughs>